Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Cyber Secrets. In this episode, we will cover online anonymity. The simple question, can one stay anonymous on the internet, is not one that can be answered in a simple manner. The short answer is both yes and no. By definition, anonymity is staying nameless in a crowd of many faces. The way the internet works is you have to give up your identity in order to communicate with others. Each device connected to the network has a unique fingerprint. Now imagine sending a message through the old snail mail system. You place the destination address on the outside of the message or package and then send it on its way. If you want a response, you have to add your return address. Once the message is in the system, there's a trace added at every point it touches, from the first source, or the point of entry, to the destination. Electronic devices work the same way. For one device to communicate with another, there has to be a source where the message enters the network and a destination where it's received. The term spoofing, for example, this refers to an attempt to hide or misdirect the recipient's knowledge of where the message originated from. Thinking back to a mail example, someone that didn't want their identity known may travel a long distance to place the message into the system or an outgoing mailbox. The Unabomber, Theodore Kaczynski, used this method to send mail bombs or low-tech explosives to those that he wanted to kill. He got caught because when he touched the system, to send the packages, he left a forensic trace, i.e. an eyewitness to the activity of placing the package in the Dropbox. If he would have placed a return address for someone else, law enforcement would have investigated that spoofed recipient as well. Network analysis is based off the same mechanical process. Track back the recipient. If the suspect recipient is not the actually involved in the attack, you now have to trace back each hop or handoff of the message until it hits its true origin. In the Unabomber case, it was an outgoing postal drop box. Network forensics, that would be the last port on a switch or wireless access point, because everything does leave a trace. If one entity controlled all of the devices, and all of the devices kept detailed logs, Every action could be tied back to its original source, its true source, its true sender. But what if there wasn't an eyewitness? What if the eyewitness had amnesia or died shortly after? What if the suspect could change their appearance, their fingerprints, the genetic code at will? What if there was no log files or trace evidence? What if the actions were disguised in such a manner that they were unrecognizable to those watching it happen. These variables break the perfect system, make forensic investigation near impossible, and allow it to be feasible for true anonymity on the internet. The source and destination address on the internet comes in the form of an IP address or internet protocol address. Most of the individuals are using IP version 4, while most of the internet backbone is using IP version 6. If device A has an address of 192.168.0.13 and wants to talk to a device with the address of 10.0.0.42, both sides will need to know the route or path the message needs to take before they can communicate. Each IP address is also associated with what's called a MAC address, this is a fingerprint to the hardware. Think of an IP address as the address of an apartment complex, and the MAC address would be the number on the door of the recipient. Just like the number on the door of the recipient, a MAC address can be changed. Doing this throws a monkey wrench in locating who actually sent the message. If somebody wanted to keep the identity of the system that they used clear from the network traces, they could spoof somebody else's address. This new address is then believed to be true by all of the other devices on the network. Proxy servers are devices or hops that open up the message, repackage it, and then resend it using their own identity or fingerprint. 
if somebody were to trace it back the origin, it would be left with the dead end at the proxy. If the proxy kept a ledger or a log of all messages it handled, the investigators would be able to pick up the new trail and analyze the new suspect's source. Many proxies on the internet do not log for this very reason. Many countries either do not have laws that require retention of log files, or they do not enforce the laws they do have. Those that run these types of proxies love these regions. If you were to encrypt a message, the message could not be understood by eavesdroppers unless they also had your secret key. With that key, like the intended recipient, they could unlock your secrets and read your communications. Both people and governments have been using encryption methods since the beginning of time to keep their secrets secret. They have also tried to be breaking keys of others to find out what secrets the others are hiding. In the digital age, the tools have changed, but the game stays the same. Many proxy servers now allow encryption tunnels, and users are even turning to VPN networks. Onion routing is a good example of proxies using encryption and of a government wanting to both secure their messages and keep their users, i.e. soldiers, agents, assets, and even reporters, and amenities safe. Onion routing employs an ever-changing chain of proxy servers and several layers of encryption. Now, the same methods are being used by those on the internet for that same purpose. There are several networks built off the onion routing theory. Many of these networks even have a proprietary routing layer of their own for those in that environment to communicate without ever leaving that virtual community. This allows for the creation of what is known as a darknet, or a network that is not found on the internet, yet it uses the internet as a backbone for communicating. Tor and Invisible Internet Protocol, or I2P, are two such onion routing networks that enable a darknet to exist, and they are both gaining popularity. Tor has been around for years and is a large resource bank. There has been a lot of money invested into the development of this network, and new proxies are coming online every day. It's this effort that keeps the environment alive and kicking. How can one stay anonymous? As previously covered, the perfect system of knowing the source of all communications has indeed been broken. However, it is important to understand that people still leave evidence behind just by being in existence. I'm not trying to be my normally cryptic self by saying this, but what I mean is that each individual has their own persona. This persona in itself has a unique fingerprint. To stay truly anonymous, one not only needs to follow the rules of the technology and physics, but also must follow the rules of psychology. A person cannot exist in two places at once. However, one can carry multiple personas that exist only in the areas that, that specific identity is needed. If someone wants to keep their identity secret, just like a comic book superhero, they would have to have a mask and become someone else. You rarely see Batman checking Bruce Wayne's email, Facebook, or bank accounts while he's on the prowl. There's a reason for this. As soon as someone accesses their personal accounts while wearing that proverbial mask, the safety of anonymity is then gone. There may be an eyewitness lurking in the shadows that can now tie the two identities together. To be anonymous, you need to become and stay someone else while in that realm. The inherent need for some to keep anonymous has generated a massive explosion in another anonymous communications mechanism. If you want to buy something and don't want everybody to know what you purchased, you can use an electro cryptocurrency like Bitcoin or Litecoin. If one were to only use this currency when connected to a darknet, the original source or owner would stay secret. Many that use these digital tokens do not go the extra step thus leaving hints of the evidence like bread trails back to their origin. The FBI recently caught pedophiles using the darknet by similar means. They caught them by sending an email to a target using a vulnerable version of Firefox to view the email. The FBI was able to compromise the computer 
and then have a call home from that suspect's computer. Since the suspects were only using the browser to communicate on the darknet, the attack code ran by itself and called home on the real IP address. This revealed the true origin of the suspect's identity. If the entire operating system only used to connect through Tor or the other darknets, then it would have been far more difficult, if not impossible, to track down the real identity. Criminal hackers, state-sponsored attackers, stalkers, drug dealers, pedophiles, and other undesirable elements use methods like this to stay anonymous all the time. So do freedom fighters, patriots, and those that believe in freedom of speech and the right to keep their private lives private. Now we come full circle. No matter what the reasoning, some want to stay hidden. The simple question, can one stay anonymous on the internet, is not one that can be answered in a simple manner. The short answer is both yes and no. If you'd like to know more about Darknets, Tornet, or some of the other information covered in this episode, go to informationwarfarecenter.com slash the beginner's guide to the internet underground. And also stay tuned to the future broadcasts of Cyber Secrets. If you'd like to learn more about advanced information security, InfoSec Institute is a great resource at infosecinstitute.com.